It was my birthday a few weeks ago and I came close to just letting it pass unnoticed. People had asked if I was throwing a party or going out. A trip to Vegas was even suggested at one point, but none of that is me. In the end, I decided I could celebrate my own way, somewhere secluded in nature, somewhere quiet. So I booked a long weekend with two of my best friends in this big country house in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by five acres of woodland and fields. The first morning, after recovering from a few too many champagnes the night before, the sun came out and I found myself wandering the grounds. I didn't mean to go on a nature walk, but the air felt so good and it was strangely mild for late autumn. So, with my pyjamas tucked into my wellies, I went on a slow exploration of the woodland. And on this forest walk, I got thinking about how simple it can be to find happiness. After our basic human needs are met, food, water, shelter, what else do we really need to be happy? I realised there are six things that I always go back to when I need a happiness reset nature. Breathing fresh air, hearing the crunch of fallen leaves under your feet or the trickle of distant streams, enjoying nature is a beautiful way to come back to the present moment. Maybe this is what they mean by forest bathing? I don't know. But one of the reasons I love nature is it makes you realise how small you really are. The forest around me was so abundant with life. Squirrels, deer, horses, trees, bushes and toadstools, Billions of living organisms in a single square metre of the forest floor. And humans are part of nature. We're just another bunch of tiny specks on this rock hurtling through space. When you realise how small you are, you realise your problems are small too. Observing the abundance of nature is such an easy way to enjoy the peace of now. 2. Gratitude I rarely get ill, but I had a nasty cold back in October, and I remember it was so difficult to sleep or do anything because even breathing was an effort. When we're ill, we become so aware of our own fragility, sort of aware of the functionality of our bodies. But why do we have to get ill before we become grateful for our health and our bodies? We tell ourselves that we'll be so grateful just to be able to breathe clearly again or to sleep through the night or enjoy our food. But if we're not careful, we quickly fall into the silly problems and stresses of everyday life again. And so remembering to be grateful for just a moment in the day can help keep things in perspective. Three, find your tribe. This year has been huge for me in terms of my interactions with other people, setting boundaries, resetting relationships and getting clear with myself about who and what I want in my life. But how do you find your tribe? Well, just be your authentic self, which I know is such a cheesy phrase, but this way you'll naturally attract the right people into your life and the wrong ones will just drift away when they're no longer a good fit. I spent this weekend with my friends Matt and Luke, who know my every quirk and foible. It meant I was totally relaxed all weekend. I didn't feel that I should be doing anything to entertain them. There was no pressure to go out and do anything. Instead, we just talked and drank and ate lots of cake. 4. Breathe. Breath is something we can all tap into anytime, anywhere. Not just in those well-designed moments of a yoga class or a meditation, but on public transport, in a busy street, waiting in line to pay for groceries. A conscious breath is a little instant hit of de-stressor. 5. Treat yourself. Maya Angelou said, Moderation in all things, and even moderation in moderation. Don't get too much moderation, you know? Which to me means it's okay not to stick to the perfect habits and daily routines. So eat the cake, open another champagne, and if it gives you a bloated belly or a sore head, that's okay once in a while. Especially if you're with your tribe. Matt had organised a basket of spa products, so on one of the nights we poured a couple of beers and pampered ourselves by the fire. It was perfect to spend this time with my little tribe, two other humans and a four-legged furry friend. Number six, play. Play like a kid. 
don't take it all so seriously. When I saw a photo of this piano on the Airbnb listing, I had decadent visions of us in our best clothes, sipping champagne while we took turns playing Mozart. But none of us play the piano, so the reality was me in my wrinkled pyjamas hammering on the keys to deliver this tuneless version of Happy Birthday. But I didn't care how it sounded, because I think a little music, no matter how badly played, is always a joy. Thank you so much to Matt who spontaneously filmed about 99% of this video on his phone while we wandered through the forest, and thanks to Luke and Milo for all the laughs over the weekend. I'd love to hear what makes you happy. What do you do to reset? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> thanks for watching, and hopefully see you soon.